Joe Blasco here, and we're back with our new show, Spotlight on Success. And our guest today is master makeup artist, Mr. John Rizzo. Hey, John. <laughs> Welcome good to, to see the you, show. Joe. It's always and good to see you. And thank you. It's been such a long time since I've seen you. you know? Yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah, it has. And uh, uh, I'm really happy that uh, you were able to make it today and to do this show. Oh, my pleasure. You have been really, really busy. And Deadwood, and I know you're all familiar with Deadwood. And by the way, this is a worldwide show. This is, if you weren't already nervous, <laughs> this is not just local, it's worldwide. So all of you out there that are outside of the United States, you're going to want to go on to the internet and look up Deadwood, right? And see, the, the, are there clips from the show that they can see? Yeah, they, I believe if they're so. they're not yeah. familiar with the yes. show? Yes, oh, absolutely. Right? Uh, John was nominated for three Emmy Awards for Deadwood, and you won two. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And they're right here. Yep. They're fantastic. You know, I watched the show so many times. And what I, you know, when you watch the show, you look at the show, right? It's a Western, right? which was really refreshing because I hadn't seen a really quality Western in a long time, right? And you watch the show and you go, gee, these, you know, what do they do to these people? It's like, they're, they're dirty, you know, and, and they look very natural though, you know, and well, they've got beards and mustaches, they probably grow them, you know, but it's not until you sit down with the man who did the work that you really understand and learn the amount of work and time that went into making these people look real and natural. Hair pieces, you know, I mean, very intricate highlighting and shading, perfect placement and that has to be matched from shot to shot of, you know, dirt patterns and, and bruises and all of the injury simulation that you did. Amazing stuff. Oh, really you. amazing stuff. And you worked with Ron Schneider on that, right? Yeah. Whitey Snyder's son. Father. Father. I mean, I'm sorry, Whitey Snyder's, yeah, you're right, Whitey Snyder's son. Father, I was going to yeah. say father. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. Where have I been? Ron, Ron, yeah, Ron was, Ron's Whitey's son. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And, and, uh, I had no idea. I didn't know. We were talking this morning before we went on the air, and I found out that that, that, Whitey, uh, that Whitey is his father. Yeah. And and you know, I've oftentimes, oftentimes, looked at pictures of Marilyn Monroe, and Whitey Snyder was Marilyn Monroe's personal makeup artist, and I and he worked over there at 20th Century Fox most of the time with Ben Nye. Yeah. Yeah, with Ben Nye. I I because I, I apprenticed with Ben Nye Senior. Right. After he left. It was not a formal apprenticeship. Right. I apprenticed with him for almost three years mm -hmm. in his shop. And he used to talk about Whitey Snyder all the time and about Marilyn Monroe and how, how Whitey really had the patience of Job, you know, in dealing with what he had to deal with. And he did such a remarkable job, not only, you know, psychologically, you know, making Marilyn feel good on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, really making her look sensational. He was kind of like the forerunner. This interview is about you, but we've got to talk, no, 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 no. We talk about Whitey. I'm just happy. Whitey just was a, a great bit. guy. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, actually yeah. got to meet him once, yeah, so it was yeah. a pleasure. Now, is he still with us or no? He no. passed away. Whitey yeah. passed away. Yeah, yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Actually. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. And, and, but he was like the forerunner of using the, the white eye, you know, highlight on the eyelids, you know, and the, and the really, you know, avant-garde kind of black liner. And his, his photos of Marilyn Monroe are absolutely classic. They're you know, amazing. You find them anywhere, everywhere. Anyway, but Ron works with you. And uh, the two of you, um, are you the department head? On Deadwood, I was the department head. And I just, just to clarify one thing, especially for um, you know, everybody out there, Deadwood was an amazing show. It was the hardest show I ever did. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, the most rewarding for, not just because of the Emmys, but because of the, the work itself, who we were working with, and the results yes. of, of that show. But more importantly, it would never have been the success that it was on our part for makeup and hair yeah. if it wasn't for all the makeup artists and hairstylists who worked on that show every day and their contributions were absolutely yeah. invaluable. John Besides, Blake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, John Blake made hair goods for us. Um, Ron was with, uh, you know, I was lucky that Ron decided to come onto the show. Adam Brandy. Yeah. Uh, How is Adam? Adam's doing well. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, I have him on the show. Adam's doing well. Uh, uh, Jim Scribner, Bob Scribner, our hair department, Carol Pershing, Terry Bay, uh, Bayel, 
uh, Kimberly Spatiri, Peter Tothpal, um, God first season, um, Josie Norman. Uh, we had so many people that were there contributing every single day. And for makeup artists, and this is very important. You work with hairstylists right. intimately, and right. especially on a period show, oh, yeah. you can do something, and if they're not there to help you and to integrate everything together, the, the look can be ruined or they can save you. And it works both ways. Yes. And it was an incredible team effort. I was the luckiest man in the world to have such a great team of artists yes. every single day. I mean, we had at least makeup and hair, minimum six to eight every single day. And wow. we went sometimes up to like wow. 30. Mm. You know, because the background, all the, all the background had to be done. And it wasn't just throwing dirt on people, right. even for the background. Right. There were subtle things that had to yes. be done with hair and, and yes. with makeup. Yes. So that the look, along with wardrobe, yes. along with props, along with set dressing, yes. you walked into that set and you went, wow. And you know, the, the result is that every, every episode was like a mini feature. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. The detail that you put into this was remarkable. I can imagine walking onto that set. It must have been like being in a time machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that? that? That had to have been just one of the most yeah. re remarkable experiences. Our set was life. as large as three football fields. Wow. That's amazing. Was it? Was it all? It, you, it, the the town was in a stage, was it not? It was on on a back lot. On at, the back uh, lot. It, we were we shot in New Hall at the Melody Ranch, which was Gene yeah. Autry's old ranch. Yes. And there was a street there when we when we actually started, and yes. they built around that yes. street. And then we just expanded, yes. like the town of Deadwood historically expanded. Yes, it expanded. Our show as well. expanded. As well. yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah. You actually got to live it. Then. Oh boy, did we ever! Oh my Day God. and night. When did you start? What time in the morning do you, do you, did you guys arrive? Uh, sometimes, you know, at four. -ish. Did you have like a, a another makeup unit that worked around the clock preparing and cleaning hair goods, or did you guys do everything yourself? We did. You did it all yeah. yourselves. Yeah. Congratulations! Uh, well, that thanks. is just amazing. So, uh, so back, I'll just say so. Yeah, yeah Ian McShane yes. and and Timothy Oliphant. I mean, who were you know they were the stars of the show. Right. right. I mean, they they grew their mustaches. Yes. Except in season three, when they sort of we had to fill in until they grew in because right, right. they had other commitments and those challenges we had to deal with as well. Right. But we were lucky to have a lot of our actors, uh, yes. Brad Dorff as well. Yes. Um, you know, they grew their own hair goods after the after the pilot. Yes. Um, other actors didn't have, we didn't have that luxury because maybe they had another show where they just couldn't grow facial hair and we had to put facial hair right. on them. Did they change the script on you like last minute where you had to, you found yourself, <laughs> you found yourself working out of the makeup box more than being able to prepare with pre-made appliances? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, the, the, the show... You've got to have a lot of stories. Oh boy. <laughs> the, show, the show was created by David Milch, who is probably one of the most incredible minds uh, in television, if not just in general. I mean, he's, he's, an, he's a brilliant man. He created NYPD Blue with Stephen Bochco. He was on, he was on uh, you know, uh, they met on Hill Street Blues, and they've had other projects as well. But David created and wrote Deadwood. And David works in a very unique way. Most of the time, we did not have scripts because David likes to be very organic. He likes to see what's going on with the actors, how they're working with each other, yes. and he'll go, hmm, I can change that. Right. I, can, I can make this better, right. I can do this. So basically for us, you know, they go, well, we're having Joe come in today and we need him next week to play this character. Yeah. We go, okay. <laughs> and then they go, well, we decided we need him tomorrow. And you go, Okay, and then tomorrow would come and you'd be all ready, and they go, "Oh, it's okay. We really yeah, we're don't need go until back next, next week." week. <laughs> so it was always that, but you know, the the challenge. It's like tell us like live television, oh, like, you know, yeah. videotapes, television in yeah. the studio. Except that the the one good thing that we had about that show is that whether you were an actor or a crew member, yes. there is not one person who did not want to be there yes. working with David, yes. working with his show, yes. because you knew 
the end result yes. was going to be absolutely astonishing, yeah, and it was. It was. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it really was. It was the hardest show I ever did and the most rewarding show I ever did because when you read his words, you said, wow, I'm helping to make that yes. come to life. Yes. Tell, tell our, our worldwide audience mm -hmm. ab about the story. Sure. Um, Deadwood, South Dakota, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1876 was Indian territory that the United States had given the Indians yes. until the white man found gold. <laughs> that, never, that was it. <laughs> that's it. You tell the white <laughs> There's man. There's the story. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, all of a sudden, uh, all bets were off, right. and they just came in droves. Right. And Deadwood, South Dakota, in less than six months, went from basically trees and right. brush and mud to, to 10,000 people. Wow. And there was no plumbing. There was, you know, no streets. There yes. were, you know, tents and some buildings yes. that went up. And then they just expanded from there. Yes. And it was just absolutely amazing that this town, for the first year, I mean, it was totally lawless. They had a, they averaged a killing a day. Oh my God. A killing did, a day. Did you actually <clears throat> have pit photographs? I mean, if, you know, of the actual Deadwood and the people yes. and the population <coughs> Excuse you know, me. that you yes. worked from. Actually, we did, and we, we were very fortunate to get a lot of help from Mary Kopko and Jerry Bryant. The historian? Yeah, yes. who are the, who work in Deadwood. Yes. They are, they work at the Adams House and Museum, which is the official yes. uh, museum yes. in Deadwood, and we would call them up. We would tell them what we needed. Uh, they would send us photos. They would give us information Terrific. for all the departments. They were incredibly helpful. Yes. In fact, so much so uh, that we... You put together would, something for them? Well, actually, yeah. when you win an Emmy, you can... You can um, when you're a winner, mm -hmm. the Academy says, do you have anyone who helped you achieve your goal yes. in any way? And you get a certain certificate, and we made sure that they had gotten certificates yes. thanking them for their work because they had given us so much research, yes. which was incredibly helpful. Yes. That's I mean, we, a, that's we were, fabulous. Yeah, and they came to visit the set. Yeah. I took my father on a, on a trip to Deadwood so he could see the real Deadwood. Yeah. I mean, oh, it was no, great. That had to be exciting. Yeah. Did they, they, they must have tons of photos that, uh, from the film. There, oh. of all the characters. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like in their Chamber of Commerce building. Yes, they do. Museum. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. They, you know, they had the yeah. actors visit right. there at one time. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking down your list here, and uh, forgive me for putting these glasses on, but you've got sure. so many things going on here, John. I'm telling you. You've got, um, let me just read down this list. Uh, the thing, you know, you, you, Tremors, American Family, Cold Case, uh, Swing Town, um, and uh, uh, you've got uh, Training Day, all right? A Fame LA, and there's Growing Pains, Interspace, Interspace, Predator. That had to be, uh, what, what did you do on Predator? Did you, were you? Uh, Predator, I worked with Scott Edo, mm -hmm. he, um, and he had called me up and said, come to Mexico. And all of a sudden there I was doing this film that originally was titled Hunter. You know, uh, and then they realized it was a Hunter TV series, so they changed it oh, to right, Predator. Right, right, right. Um, so basically, you know, uh, I worked with Scott, and we did all the right. actors, you know, including Arnold. Yes. And then um, that was the first time we were in Mexico, which was March to June. Yes. And then we had to come back the next year and finish off the film, and then Jeff Don came and finished off Arnold, and yes. I and I worked with the, the rest of the actors. So the only thing we didn't do was The Predator. The Predator yes. was, a, was done by Stan Winston Studios. Yes. Yes. And Stan had about six, seven guys come down. That was a, uh, Kevin Hall. Um, he was a Predator, unfortunately. Kevin's not with us anymore. He was really a good guy, and he was seven foot um, two or something huge. like that. Yeah, yeah. And he did a great job. He was also Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. <clears throat> Uh, here's one that jumps out at me, that uh, Peggy Sue got married. <laughs> what a great film. What a fun film that yeah. was. Now, uh, some of those, just so you know, like you mentioned Peggy Sue. That's not Sue. one of your bigger titles. But I well, mean, no, no, it no. I a, mean, it's a it great, a it's very, a great show. Very, very but I, great I wasn't show. the department head, but I did get credit, so I felt it was, right. it was okay to put my... Right, uh, right. But Tom Case was the department great, head. Good. And, wow, what a great yeah. makeup artist. And nice Frank Griffin. Oh, both. yeah. 
you know, they both did that show, and they, I was fortunate enough, they said, hey, kid, because that's how it was back right. then. <laughs> come on, come up and help us on this show. So it was great to work with them. I see the Dukes of Hazard here. These did, are, that's the original Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah, I did the last three episodes. Wow. <laughs> the last three? I, they told me, they said, come in, Leo Latito, who was then the department head right, over at, right. at uh, Warner, said, right. come on, kid. Right. They're going to come and do this. I went, okay. I didn't know. It was the, they came back after the, the famous... Right. <clears throat> Boys had their walkout or something right, like right, that, right, right. and I think it was three, maybe it was six. I don't remember, but you know, they said you're doing this, and I went, okay. So I got to do the Dukes of Hazard. John, you've been doing makeup now. I mean, that's fan. That's mm -hmm. un unbelievable. You've been you've been doing makeup for what 28 years now. Yeah, right? 28 years. That's a long time. It is. Now, when when was the first time, that, if you could think back, that it struck you and you thought to yourself, wow, I want to be a makeup artist. Well, okay, it's, it's a funny story, and I'll tell it. Um, I was back, I'm from New York, and I was in a theater company that was founded by Geraldine Fitzgerald, yes. called the Everyman Company of Brooklyn. It was founded by her and a Franciscan, Franciscan friar, Brother Jonathan. And the whole idea was, she used to be in, in, a, in a company called the Dublin Players, and they would go out to all the villages, and they would do theater for all these people who couldn't get into town to see theater. So she wanted the Everyman Company of Brooklyn to be like the Dublin Players, and we would go out into the street, into, into neighborhoods where people wouldn't, had never seen theater, and do theater in the street. That was number one. Number two, I became the guy who they go, oh, we need to do this or that, and I'd fool around and go, there was the Bill Corso book, remember? And I'd go, eh, that's how you make a scar, you could do this. And then through another friend of mine who was a hairstylist, I met a makeup artist. Uh, He's Richard Corson. I'm sorry, Richard Corson. Right. Who did I say? Bill Corson. Oh, Bill. That's flattering. Bill, there's, a, there's a plug for you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, that was the first book. And then, like I said, a friend of mine owned a salon. Right. He introduced me to a makeup artist. I got shown a couple of things, and, and he said the famous words. He said, go west, young man. Yes. And I went, okay. And my sister had moved out here a year and a half before. Yes. I called her up and said, I think I'm going to come out for a while and try to be a makeup artist. She went, you are? <laughs> I went, yeah, okay. So she said, okay, can I sleep on your couch? Okay. And I literally packed up, got rid of my apartment in Brooklyn, came here, slept on her couch for the first month and a half. And I said, what am I going to do? And I, and I had the names of some, at that time, there were still makeup departments at the studios. Right. So I had the names of the department heads. The first one was Nick Marcellino, right. who was the department head at Universal. Yes. So now I go drive by Universal. I, don't, I know nothing about Los Angeles. And I'm looking at all these people walking in and out of the gate. And at certain times of the day, there's like a lot of people because right. I'm going, oh, this must be when work starts. How long, let me interrupt you just for a second. Yeah. How long had you been in Los Angeles when you did this? Uh, about a week and a half. A week. Yeah. And it's amazing because I did exactly the same yeah. thing. I had a cousin <laughs> and I slept on their couch. Yeah. Exactly the same. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Continue. So it was about a week and a half. And so I went, you went okay. over to Universal. So, and I'm looking, I'm going, okay, this is just like those Hollywood pictures. People right. walking right. in and out of the studio. And they and some people were carrying things right. or they, they had, you know, they were in suits or some people weren't in suits. And I went, hmm, okay. I went home. I put on something nice. And I had a portfolio, a leather portfolio with all my great makeups done on my father, my sister, my cousin, yeah. my friends, you know, beards and burns or whatever. And I said, uh, I'm a makeup artist, right? And now I sneak into this like crowd about a half a block away, people walking, and I just kind of walk through the gate and I'm like, no guard stopping me. Keep on walking, John, keep on walking. Now I'm in the middle of Universal Studios. I don't know anything where I am. And I see somebody and I go, oh, excuse me, that's the makeup department, right? And the guy, and luckily I was in the right spot. The guy says, no, it's the big red doors over there. And I went, oh yeah, that's right. Now I walk through the red doors. I open up the doors and there's this blonde lady behind the desk. Her name was Anita and she was Nick's secretary. Yes. And she goes, hi, may I help you? I said, yeah, I'm John Rizzo. I'm here to see Nick Marcellino. And she went, okay. And she oh. says, Nick, there's a guy, John Rizzo here is here to see you. Send him in. So I go in, I introduce myself. He realizes by, you know, about 
the second sentence that somehow I've snuck in oh my and I'm God, showing God. him my portfolio and he goes well that's nice kid but you know you got to be in the union to work here and you know we don't have anything and besides that I think the actor strike was just ending something like that because right. there was an actor strike back in the 80s what, what year was that? 1980 it was 1980. October 1980 oh my so so he says well but you know you could possibly get some days working at NBC. I went, really? He goes, yeah, Harry Blake's the you know, department head over there for makeup. Let I me went, make a call. Did he call No, Harry? no, he didn't call. He didn't call Harry. I went, okay, well, thank you very much, Nick. I really appreciate your time. I get in my car. I break out my AAA map. I'm looking at directions. Now I go, I don't have to hide. I drive my car right up to the gate at NBC, and I go, <clears throat> hi, John Rizzo, Nick Marcelino from Universal sent me to see Harry Blake. <laughs> oh, so, my God. So the guard calls up and says, Harry, there's I some... I thought I was clever. <laughs> Holy moly. That's so the, terrific. So the guy, call, <laughs> the guy calls up, and he says, Harry, there's some guy named John Rizzo here. Nick Marcelino sent him from Universal. Harry says, send him in. Now I go in. They give me a parking space. Boy, did you work it, baby? Oh, I, that's great. <laughs> Holy now man. I go. Now I go in, and uh, I meet <laughs> Harry. And after about sentence number two, he realizes, you know, what this kid's done. And he looks at all my stuff, and he goes, well, that's really great, kid, but I don't have anything at the moment. I go, well, thank you, Mr. Blake. And now I'm trying to do this. Well, I haven't gotten any work. Not long after that, I did, because the actor strike ended, I was able to get a job. Nick Marcelino called me up. I worked on Harper Valley PTA. He needed 30 days to get into the local. I got 31 days and got laid off. Now I'm a member of Local 706, and I can go to union meetings. Yes. But I'm, I can't get a job. I'm, nobody's hiring me. It's, I can't get a job. And I'm working as a messenger, accounting, you anything. Know, anything I can do to pay the rent. <laughs> um, about... Less than a year later, at one of the union meetings, I'm there, and all of a sudden I see Harry Blake walk in. And he happened to be there because he, he, he was coming with a friend or something. And I walk up to him and I go, uh, Harry Blake? Yeah. I said, John Rizzo, we met about a year or so, maybe Nick, less Nick than a year Marshall, ago. He <laughs> and he says, I, I came with my portfolio, and he's looking at me like, oh, yeah, kid. I said, well, I made it. I'm in the local. And he Obviously, you are. You're at the union meeting. You know, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And I said, well, uh, yeah, just nice to see you, Harry. And he goes, well, good. Nice seeing you. And that was it. The very next day, I got a call from Harry Blake yeah. saying, can you come and work on Days of Our Lives? I told my girlfriend, that's it. I hit the lottery. I'm working at NBC. <laughs> Finally. What I didn't realize was Harry called up the local. Hey, is this John Rizzo? Yeah, he's on the list, you know. And, and he called me up, and for about four or five years, Harry Blake really put food on my table. He really did. And anything Harry wanted, I did. Worked on the soap opera, worked on the news, worked on game shows, worked on The Tonight Show, went on remotes for The Sunday Show. Yes. Whatever he said, uh, Harry, whatever you want, worked... Work Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's right. Day, because yeah. you had the news. I mean, you know, yeah. somebody always had to be there. That's right. It didn't matter. You know, Dick Clark specials. Yes. Uh, it didn't matter. And it was a great learning experience because I did not know anything. I have this big, gigantic eight-drawer makeup case. And, the, <laughs> and I walk into the soap opera, and I'm looking, and everybody put out more makeup than I'd ever seen in my life. Right, like they're doing Ben Hur. Yeah. yeah. And I and I had my case, and I thought I was just going to open up my case, and I went, I'm like monkey see, monkey do. Oh, they put that out. I'm putting that out. I'm putting that out. Okay. Oh, my whole case just came out. I laid it out there, and. But this is how it's done. Yeah, it was amazing. It was a great learning experience. Harry you were driven. Uh, Harry you was were a, driven. Yeah. And Harry, he, what, what a wonderful. It's a man. wonderful man. He also introduced me to Harry Merritt. Yes. Who was the department head over at CBS? Yes. And every once in a while, when there was no work, you'd go over there. Yeah. Harry'd say, "Hey, you can use John." Right. And I'd go work at CBS, and I met some of the guys at CBS. I wish you would have come to ABC. Yeah. That, actually, Rudy called me up once and said he was going to put me on 
uh, something. It was either uh, something over at the studio or at, um, you know, when they did the the Academy Awards. Yes, yes. And I was sort of at the the bottom of the the long yeah, list, yeah. <laughs> so it, so it didn't happen. Yeah. And uh, but those four or five years training at NBC and CBS, yes. learning how to do makeups yes. and do them quickly Fast. and f oh yeah and get them that's out that's the key and then yeah. going into the film world and refining that because yeah. all of a sudden it's it's different yeah. everybody used to you know the film guys not all of them that's not true not all of them but there were a lot of people who had an attitude like you do tv you couldn't possibly do film right, right. it's like yeah i had that yeah and what what you realized was that you really had to just pull back on stuff yeah. but you but you were fast and you yeah. could do that yeah. so it was a great learning experience I met a lot of great makeup artists Tommy Cole Mark yeah. Dusan yeah. Bobby Osterman yes. uh, ha like both Harry's um, God I, I you know oh, you don't want to start yeah I know, the great I, I know. it's artists. just we'll be here all day <laughs> yeah I mean you know it was just it just it was an amazing experience <laughs> that do you use Harry Blake brushes I do Excellent. I still well. I have the original set that Harry. I, they're not. Some of them are gone now. But when yeah. Harry first put them, you know, yeah. on the market, yeah, I'd said, okay, I'll take a right. set. You can get them at Cinema Secrets in Burbank. Yeah. We had Marie Stein on as a guest. Yeah, yeah, last week. Who was a great, yeah. a great makeup artist, a really good man, yeah. and a very good friend of Harry's. Yeah, they were best friends. Yeah, actually. Yeah. And uh, you know, I used to send Harry. I, out on uh, for my cosmetics company, I'd send him out on trips, right? Mm -hmm. And I sent him to to uh, Sweden. Oh yeah, that was a mistake to send Harry to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> you had to know Harry. To I know, know why, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to Sweden. He represented Joe Blasco Cosmetics. He did a great job for me, and uh, yeah, we call it, Harry. You know the great. You know, you know Harry's nickname was the Great Brush Man. <laughs> Yes. I mean, because when he put out yes. those brushes, I mean, oh, yes. he just loved working with good brushes. Yes. Well, he designed, and, and for all of you out there worldwide, Harry Blake, who was the head of makeup, as we've just discussed, for NBC Television in Burbank, California. Sanford the, and Son, yeah. Laughing, yeah, all yeah. that. All, yeah, all the original shows. Um, uh, the Tonight Show, all right. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Johnny Carson. He did Johnny for yeah. years. Oh, years, years. Uh, he designed brushes. I mean, he made the best brushes. They were very, very unique. And the, this entire line of brushes is able to be seen and purchased at Cinema Secrets Beauty Supply. You can go to cinemasecrets.com and check out all the Harry Blake brushes, mm -hmm. and you'll see how terrific they are. Yeah. But it's, uh, I miss Harry. He Harry, was, if you're listening, was, thanks for everything. Yeah. Really. He was a great guy. Yeah, he certainly was. And we're going to stop just for one second. Sure. And uh, we're going to be right back, right after this. Don't you go away. Do you have the passion of an artist? Does the idea of working on a living canvas thrill you? For over 30 years, Joe Blasco has pioneered the ultimate training for film and television makeup artistry. Students are taught to become professional makeup artists by industry professionals at our state-of-the-art facilities in Hollywood and Orlando. Join our award-winning graduates and realize your dream of becoming a professional makeup artist today. Visit us at joeblasco.com or call 323-467-4949 to schedule a tour of our campus. Welcome back. Joe Blasco here with master makeup artist, Mr. John Rizzo. Every time you say that, I cringe. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true, my man. It's true. Hey, um, you really paid your dues. Yeah, I noticed uh, one of the shows on your resume was Cold Case. Right. Well, and, not and my show. Cheryl Patak. Right. Was, well, she's one of my graduates. I believe she was the department head on there for a while. Yes, yeah, she was. Did you work with Cheryl? No, actually, um, I just helped out on Cold Case. And actually, I didn't even put that on my IMDb. Somebody, I mean, they, I always wonder how things get on IMDb. Some of the things I, I put in and say, you know, I worked <laughs> on this, put me on, they don't. And other things like Cold Case, which I basically day checked on, I look and I go, right. they got me in there. Right. So, uh, but no, I came after. Uh, Cheryl had left, and Peter Montagna. Yes. Uh, oh, Peter Montagna. Yeah, yeah, Peter's great a guy. great guy. He took over the show, and I met Peter some years ago. I never ago. met Peter. I'd, I'd love to have him on the show. He's done a lot you of great things. You would have a great time talking to yeah, Peter. Yeah, Peter Montagna, John, Johnny Blake. You yeah. Know. Peter was uh, over at Saturday Night Live Scott for Edo. years. Scott, yeah. Peter was on Saturday Night Live for years, and he 
got a, he had a great relationship with Billy Crystal and went on to be Billy's personal on a lot of shows, like Mr. Saturday Night, uh, when Harry met Sally. And um, yeah, Peter has great stories. He's a funny guy. You'd love him. And I, uh, in fact, I'll call up Peter. I'm going to be calling you up because you should be on the show. Uh, Good. And thank thanks. You. And I always have to thank people like Peter. When you're not working, your friends call you up and say, right. come help us out. Right. I, said, I remember I hadn't come to Hollywood yet. I remember seeing a picture, not of Peter, but uh, another name that I just mentioned, Scott Edo. Uh -huh. And he was on location doing makeup for some Western. I'm mm -hmm. not sure where it was. And it showed him, he was laying on a big boulder, right? Mm -hmm. Like sunny. You know, sleeping <laughs> with his makeup case right next to him. I'm sure it was Scott. And it said, makeup artist Scott Edo, you know, relaxing uh, in the blah, blah, blah. And I looked at that and I said, wow, not only do they have fun, but look, they're outside, they're relaxing. Getting I a want to be a makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, we should, I gotta get Scott to come on the show. Yeah, so he's, the others. He's, We're he's, documenting. He's, this show is document. My whole purpose of this is to document the, as much of, as possible of what is happening, what has happened, mm -hmm. and what may be happening in the future in the world of professional makeup artistry. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, that's my, my goal here. Well, when we're talking about makeup artists that you work with, or you know, you've worked with them, they've worked with you, because yeah. it's always, uh, I always like to just say, this is someone that I worked with, or someone that you know, had me on a show, or they worked with me on a show. Yes. Uh, I know, and, and this is something, if you don't mind my, my saying. No, go ahead. Um, I have never, ever been in a situation where I, especially when I first started, and I certainly, it could have happened and I would have accepted it, where guys like Tom Case or Frank Griffin or yes. Rick Sharp or Ron Snyder yes. could have easily said, this is John Rizzo, my assistant. They never, ever... Yes said that. Why? Because they felt, Harry Blake, same thing. Yeah. I mean, Harry Blake was in charge of the department yes. because they felt that that term was demeaning. demeaning. And, and, and anytime, so. yeah. anytime they introduced me or any other makeup artist, they, this is John, one of, our, one of the makeup artists, so this is the makeup team. Yes. And I always did that. And I hear a lot of makeup artists today say, this is so-and-so, my assistant, yes. and it makes me cringe. Yes. No one is your assistant. Everyone is your equal. Your colleague, yeah, you're all your colleagues. colleagues. Yeah. In fact, what I peer, prefer, I, you know, when, when we were working on Deadwood, I was happy to have makeup artists that I considered my equal, if, if any, right. you know, but really I felt most of them were better than me. Right. Because they were able to interpret yes. what was required of the show. Right. And deliver. Yes. You know, they were they're artists. They're makeup artists. They're not makeup assistants. Yes. They're makeup yes. artists. And Rick Sharp, uh, who basically is one of the fine makeup artists in yes. our business, yes. said to me a long time ago, is I consider all men and women that I work with makeup artists. Yes. Not anything else but makeup artists yes. and their fellow makeup artists. Yes. And that's always stuck with me. So it's just something I, I, I wanted to throw yes. out there because I think it's important for people to know how they treat the people that they work with yes. is how they're going to get respect. Yes back what goes around comes, comes around, around. Yeah, yeah exactly um, the um, th that's a great lesson uh, you know uh, this is why I would like you to come to lecture here at the makeup center well thank you yeah I think you'd be sensational you know you you really you, you've been uh, on so many things you, you, you say that uh, what you're saying about assistant makeup artists is so true but the union at one time correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. had a category. Did they not have a category? Assistant makeup artists? No, assistant get, department head. Assistant department head. Yeah. Right. It was department head, assistant department head, key makeup artist, right. um, and then makeup uh, a trainee or apprentice, I depending see. on depending on I the see. year. Yeah, I want to have I want to have Sue and uh, Tommy Tom. come on you know, and really discuss the union because I think it's so vitally important that everyone mm -hmm. know how, how important the, the union is, being a member of the union. And, uh, and I think that only Tommy and Sue would really be able to oh, absolutely. relay that to I mean, the audience. What makeup artists have to realize about the conditions is that 
when you're working, and we've all worked non-union. Yeah. And you, you know, some you shows have to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Some shows are better than others. Some people are better than others. It could be a checker at Ralph's. You know, the checker at Ralph's in Hollywood. The the manager's a nice guy. Right. The checker at Ralph's in you know Culver City. He's not a nice guy. I'm from Culver City, so really, he's a nice man. <laughs> but uh, but my point is, it doesn't matter what you do. It matters who you work with and, and the relationships yeah, you have. How you work, how you, how you treat your, your, your fellow and human the, beings. And all unions began, yeah. our union just like, you know, the coal miners union, were so that people were there for you who could negotiate your working conditions, yes. your health and welfare benefits, yes. and a fair salary. Yes, yes. And, and that's what, you know, it's the, you know, that's what all unions are there yes. for. So when we're, we're when we're working, we know we have a certain contract yes. that we're working under, and yes. that if that contract is violated, you can you can say something about because it. Because we're artists, <clears throat> yeah. we work for nothing. Yeah, oh you know boy. what I mean. And we I have. work for nothing. <laughs> like we need people, you know, to come in and to negotiate for us, and to and to say this is how much you're going to make, this is how long you're going to work, this is when you're going to break. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so a absolutely. You know, I don't know about you, but I've worked so many crazy jobs mm -hmm. on my way. Oh yeah. You know, up. You had to have as well. You have any stories? <sighs> well, in between that time when I got my 31 days and, and when Harry Blake called me up. Um, when I was at Universal for the 31 days, yes. uh, I met Mike McCracken, Werner Kempler, Ken Diaz, yes. Tom Herber, all these guys yes. that some, some of you might know, you know their names. Yes. But Mike McCracken, an incredibly talented man. Wonderful man. And, um, his son worked for us for a while. Yeah. Down in Florida. Oh, I mean, incredibly talented. I mean, just an art. The man lives in the right side of his brain. Mm -hmm. He paints. He sculpts. Yes. And you know, he was in, he was in the he was a makeup artist for a while. But really, his yes. talents went way beyond that. Yes. And um, <laughs> Mike got a show called. Uh, oh, so basically, what happened? Universal was after after my 13, 14, 15 hours working at Universal. I go up to the lab and I go, oh, what are you guys doing? This is a makeup lab. I knew nothing again. Can I help? <laughs> I was off the clock. I had to punch <laughs> out. And I'd stay there for hours and Werner would show me how to make molds and Mike would show me other things and I would just learn. Well, Mike remembered that and, and he called me months and months later and said uh, I was doing some menial job as, you know, working in some office just trying to yes. pay, pay the rent. And he had a show called The Beastmaster. I remember it. Well, we never did it, but we were doing all the stuff before that. Right. And uh, Mike said, I need some help. And I said, oh, I went to visit them. I said, can I come here and help? So I came and helped for like a day or two. And Mike said, no, I'm paying you. I went, you are? Because <laughs> you're right. I was working. I thought I was working for nothing. I just wanted to learn. No, he goes, you know, you came here. You're working. I'm paying you. He paid me. He paid me to be there. And I went, that's it. I don't have to be... You know, a part-time accountant or whatever I was doing. <laughs> and, uh, but the funny story is that we were working out of his garage, and now Cal OSHA dictates. Oh, yeah. You know, you, areas need to be ventilated, you know, what you have to do. We were mixing up urethanes while people were smoking cigars. Oh, my God. You know, which is one of the top three carcinogens yes. in the world. Yes. You know, and I'd come home with, I'd come home with headaches and go, oh, boy, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. You know, it's, it's part of the business. Right, I mean, right. but uh, once again, Mike was one of those guys. He was, he put, he, he really, he took me another step yes. and he put bread on my table. Yes, yes. You know, and it's an Italian saying. I'm Italian. Yeah. He put yeah. Harry Blake, Mike, he, they put bread on my table. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I'm eternally grateful to him, the whole family. I mean, I'm still friends with them. But the, you had what it took. They recognized that. I can see. It in I was your hungry. Eyes. No, 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 no. You were passionate. No, you were passionate. You, you, you wanted to be a makeup artist. Yeah. You know, and here you are. Yeah. And it bought a lot of spaghetti. That's right. Lots of spaghetti. Lots of spaghetti. Look at this. You know, when we called um, the Television Academy and we asked them, we said, "All right, if we display Emmys, because all of the makeup, most of the makeup artists that we're interviewing had the Emmy awards." And I said, "It's okay. It has to face to the right." And we've made a few mistakes. We faced to the <laughs> left, uh, but 
please don't hang anything from the wings. <laughs> Apparently, people are hanging like beads and things. We could have hung some spaghetti <laughs> from these wings. <laughs> Linguini. <laughs> what a beautiful statuette. Eh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It was the so two of the greatest thrills of my life. Yeah. Now tell me about that. Tell me about the moment when you were there. And wait, tell me about what did you go through to 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 be nominated? The experiences there uh, during the the actual presentation. Well, to to be nominated, every makeup artist who does a show, yes. and these are for television, so every makeup artist who does a show who feels that their work is noteworthy can submit 75 words or less explaining what they did on the show right. that they worked on so they can be considered for a nomination. 75 words or less. Or less. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I have to say that in my 28 years, up until Deadwood, uh, although I'm very proud of the work that I, that I, I did, yes. I never felt that anything was Emmy noteworthy. And that doesn't mean that the work wasn't good. And I think it's very important for makeup artists to know that, that just because you do something that may not be, you know, outstanding in its field that's going to rise above everybody else mm -hmm. so that way you can shine a light on it. Yes. That doesn't mean that the work you do is not noteworthy. Absolutely. Yeah. But for the most part, everything I ever did was what, you know, you and I have talked about this yeah. before. It's the meat and potatoes of the business. Absolutely, right. Somebody comes in, you, you do a corrective makeup, right. you do a little, you, or you do less than what may be needed because you realize they don't need that much. Exactly. And it's not important to put makeup on them so it looks like makeup. Yes. But every single day you come in, whether you're doing a soap opera, whether you're doing The Tonight Show, whether you're doing the news, whatever, you know, a game show, uh, daytime, nighttime television, feature films, you do what needs to be done yes. dictated by the script, the show. Yes. Deadwood was the first time I went, I can actually say that I can write 75 words or less and that this show is deserves the consideration to be nominated. Yes. That was number one. We did. And every year, we, we were on three seasons, and every year we were fortunate enough to be honored by our peers and they said that we were one of the five shows yes. that was nominated for outstanding makeup in a series non-prosthetic. Because yes. even though we did use prosthetics yeah. at the time, yes. we never used so much that, once again, you know, we went for that other category. Yeah. We just went for the non-prosthetic category. Um, so basically my 75 words or less just said, we did a show yes. that encompassed all of the regulars, the reoccurring characters, and the yes. background yes. to make them look historically, historically accurate yes. for the time. Yes. And what we did was we had hair goods, uh, overlay, uh, specially formulated dirts. Thank you, Mark Busan. It was his formula to begin with. Uh, I always give credit where credit is due. Uh, although, Mark, we did improve on your formula. You know that, right? <laughs> uh, and, and the character work. So, like I said, we were fortunate enough to be honored by our peers. We yes. got the nomination yes. um, for all three seasons. Every year I went there, I never prepared a speech. I, in my head, I had some key points. Right. You know, of course, you want to thank the creators of the show and so forth and yes. so on, the people you worked with. And um, It's remembering the names, remembering yeah. the names. Yeah. Because you, you don't want to forget anybody. Oh, no, you don't want to forget anybody. But I said, no, I'm not going to go with expectation. When you go with expectation, yeah. expectation leads to disappointment. Yes. I just said, it is what it is, and if we win, we win. And the first year, we didn't win. I said, well, that's okay. I mean, we were here, we were honored, and that was good. The second and the third year, second year, we won. I mean, the it was a little bit more anxiety the second year because you're going, I wonder, like, this is the second year. I mean, will we get picked? And we did, and it was very exciting. The third year was a total surprise. I figured, we, you know, we've been nominated three times. We won once. A lot of times people go, eh, we don't have to give it to them because they've already won. Yeah. You know, there are other shows that are noteworthy, and they, and they were. You know, we were up against some really incredible shows with fabulous uh, makeup artists. I mean, really, really good makeup artists, really good shows. And when we won, 
I was, I was like, I actually jumped up and went, yes! You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my seat. Luckily, the camera wasn't on me at the time. But I was. I almost knocked my girlfriend out. <laughs> and it was, it was very exciting. I, I, I went, wow, I've got bookends. Now, that's the joke in the business. You have bookends. You have two of them. You have bookends. And, um, and both times I went up, you know, it was Ron Snyder and myself. The third year, Bob Scribner was there. Uh, the first year, we, uh, the first year we won, uh, just Ron and I showed up for the awards. Um, so going up there and just you know thanking everybody, you yes, know, that's yeah. also uh, it's just a thrill. You looking at all these people, you get to thank everyone. You know, yeah, and say fabulous. thank you. This right. is a great honor, and right. it was fabulous. We have a Matthew Mungle story. I do, and Matthew Mungle was you know one of your students, and probably. I guess the most famous of your students yeah. are close to yeah. it. Yeah. Bill Corso, right. Cheryl Patak, yeah. you know. They're quite a few. But uh, Matthew and I met in the 80s when I was working at NBC, and he was over there as well. Yes. And I'm not exactly sure how this came about, but every once in a while we would, we would practice on each other. I remember doing a, um, a, a live cast on Ken Schoenfeld. Uh, who's, his father was Don Schoenfeld, who was right. a makeup artist. His uncle was Ben, ben Lane. Yes. You know, so we would do that. Okay, let's do this. So we'll practice, and I'll do one on you. You do one on, you know, you do something on me. And Matthew, and, or we do ball caps and stuff, and Matthew said, you know, you got a good hair. Do a ball cap on you. And <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do some kind of Halloween thing. You had a lot of hair. I had hair at the time. <laughs> yeah, I did have hair at the time. And... Um, so Matthew did a great bald cap on me, and he said, "I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna. I have some appliances, and I'm gonna do some stuff, and we'll, we'll do teeth." And I went, "Okay." And I think, you know, we did an impression of my mouth or something, and we came back the next week and said, "Okay, let's do this." And I sat down for it, and um, I think I have some photos. Yes, Hopefully, yes. you guys yeah, we're will gonna, show. Yeah, we're showing. We're gonna show. Um, in fact, Matthew and I both had hair. <laughs> yes, you know, that's right. In uh, yeah, back in those you days. You have hair. It, the style is short. Oh yeah, believe me. If I, I yeah, I, I have to get into style. If I if I grew this, I would look like the love child of Neil Diamond and Larry Fine. <laughs> There's nothing much left. You have more than I do. <laughs> it's uh, all in the loop. Believe me. <laughs> but Matthew did a great job, and it's uh, it's one of my uh, best photos to just hang around and go. That's me. Right. And there's yeah. a photo here. I think we're showing it of you. In the makeup, yes. making Matthew up. Yes, with Matthew wondering it. how scary this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, Matthew has a copy of that as well, uh, I, I believe. Yeah, and, John, what, what he'll be, he'll, he'll get tickled when he see uh, this. He'll love it. What, what's in store for John? Well, let's see. Um, after Deadwood, uh, I did a couple of uh, nighttime, you know, mm -hmm. television shows. Jericho being one of them with mm -hmm. Bob Scribner. Um, helped out on cold case a lot. Peter would call up in mm -hmm. between stuff, and um, and Ron Snyder had gone. To, we were we were supposed to come back and do two movies, two Deadwood movies that never happened. So Ron went off with our producers and did uh, John from Cincinnati. I went and helped out on that after uh, at the very end, for the last episode, mm -hmm. and then we were waiting for something and we got called to do Swingtown, mm -hmm. which is another great period yes, show. Yes. Um, was You're getting a reputation for, for period, period makeup. Go figure. When I was doing Predator, I got a reputation for a while. I kept on getting thrown into the jungles. Like Ken Diaz would call me Jungle Johnny, you know, because I was always the guy going into the jungles and throwing like dirt That's and great. blood and mud on people. That's now, great. now it's period shows. Yeah. You know, in between that, I did nothing but beauty. Yeah. So, you know, as and as we used to kid around, go, what do you do? I go beauty to the beast. Yeah, there you go. You know, we do it all. But uh, we did Swingtown. Swingtown, w which was great because we practically reunited the whole a bunch of the Deadwood people. Yes, yes. Ron, Ron, that was Ron's show. He said, "Come on, work with me." I said, "Great." And uh, Carol Pershing, yes. who was our uh, one of our hairstylists on Deadwood, she was the department head on the second season. Uh, and um, oh God, uh, Karen Zanke, who worked with us for a while on on Deadwood. Um, I'm going blank on some of the other people. That's all right, that's uh, right. But, but anyway, it was a period show. took place in the suburbs of Chicago yes. in the 70s. Yeah. And it was about swinging, sexual swinging. And it was on CBS. And unfortunately, uh, people liked the show, but it didn't get the ratings. So that didn't happen. All of us, the same, almost the same crew, yes. last month we went to Michigan to do a, an untitled HBO pilot. Yes. So we're waiting to see if something happens with that. And in the meantime, uh, 
I'll, I'll day check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, let's talk about the, the relationship between the department head makeup and the department head hair. Sure. In the old days, the, the head of the makeup department mm -hmm. was in charge of hair as well. Yes. And they brought the hair dressers in, mm -hmm. hairstyles. And uh, the makeup artist had full say-so over mm -hmm. everything. Uh, today, it's different. Yes, it is. And, and today, there is a department head hair mm -hmm. and a department head makeup. Absolutely. And they have to work together. Yeah. Tell us about how, how, okay. how you feel this should come about. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to also say that, uh, that department head makeup and department head hair, it's, it's, to me, it's very simple. You're a team. Right. And the makeup department and the, and the hair department, they're teams. They work together. And especially when you do a show, I really, I don't want to make it sound like period shows are, are, are you know, more difficult or yes. have, have a, a, you know, a higher cue, so to speak, than yes. any other show. Yes. But it always, it always is a team effort. Something like Deadwood, when an actor would come in and you knew you had to put a wig on that actor, and sideburns and a mustache it's like well what kind of wig where do i put the sideburns will the wig go over the sideburns will the sideburns go over the wig how are we go are we going to overlay how does that work i've been in situations where i've said you know can you help me with this i need a little help here because this is all i have this actor doesn't have any sideburns and I'm going to have to go up here but is your, are you going to be able to bring the hair down from yes. your wig yeah. and i've never ever had a hairstylist, thank God, the ones that I've worked with, who weren't cooperative. Yes. Who, because they care just as much as, as anybody else. We wanted to work and work well. Yes. Because <clears throat> as Vidal Sassoon would say, if you don't look good, we don't look good. Right. And it's really, the, it's really the truth. I mean, you can have a great lace piece or you can have a great wig, but if somehow you you put your lace piece and it ends down there and the wig ends up there, right. somebody's screwed up. Right, right. So we help each other. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is when you're designing something, you talk to each other. Yes. And how we talk to each other is we talk to each other when no one else is around. You never try to overstep the good ones, the good yes. ones that you work with. Yes. You never try to do things in front of an actor or producer where it makes it look like you're the king, you're the queen, you know. That's right. And what you do is you just, I learned to keep my mouth shut. I'm talking a lot now, but believe me, and Carol Pershing, who's a great hairstylist, will always say, John, shut up. You know, just listen. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a great hairstylist. And what I learned from working with people like Carol or Ron or uh, Tommy Cole or Mark Bisson, any of these people, Harry, is that what the best thing you can do is keep your mouth shut and listen a lot. Just listen a lot and be agreeable. That's right. And, and then accomplish what the goal is yeah. of that director or that writer, that producer, that actor. Right. It's your job to make it happen. Right, to bring their vision to life. Absolutely. Right. And, and when we do that, that's where the reward is. Right. Whether, it's, whether it's a period show or not a period show, right. it really doesn't matter. And I would be nothing, you know, without having a hairstylist working yes. with me. Because yes. they literally... They top everything we do. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. a great way of putting it. Yeah. That's really terrific. That's, that's, that's right on the money with that, John. John, I want to thank you very much for coming in here today. You're such a great guy. Ah. You know? Thank you. you. You really are, and the passion in your eyes and the love for what you do is just, you exude it. And this is, this is what, I hope they're out there taking notes. You know, you really you need to be taking notes and if you missed any part of this be sure that you watch the the, the rerun oh, of this one thing but I do one want to more say, thing. one more thing I do want to say because I one of the makeup artists I've worked with over the years yes. who well, I, I if I mentioned him I mentioned Brie, Ken Diaz oh, Ken yes. Diaz is one of the most talented makeup yes, artists yes. Um, working today yes nominated for two Academy Awards yes for really beautiful seamless subtle aging on dad yes. and on um, Mi Familia yes. and also Emmy nominated in winner but the thing is that 
Ken is one of these people, he knows when to be theatrical yes. and over the top yes. or something because he's done a lot of horror shows, yes. but he also knows the subtleties of makeup. Yes. And he is really a beauty to the beast guy. I mean, yes. he's done some of the other thing, some of the most beautiful beauty makeups I've ever seen. Yes. And I know you had mentioned you wanted to have him on, yes. so I just, yes. I want to say that it's yes. been my honor to work yes. with someone. Yes. And he's my friend. He's yes. a really he's good a guy. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. And w one, of the, <clears throat> one of the things, uh, is, is the fact that he he ha he's also an entrepreneur. Yes. And he has a product line. Yes, he does. And and it's become one of the top best known and most popular of all professional product lines. Mm. His blood is KD is, KD yeah. blood and all the special makeup. You want a funny products. story? Sure. Let's have a. Okay, KD <laughs> one KD one fifty one. <laughs> Ken's line is called KD-151. Right. Why is it called KD-151? 151. I'm right. curious. Well, uh, Ken and I, when we knew each other back in the day, one of the things Ken liked was Bacardi 151 rum. <laughs> I love it. And and when we, uh, I, Ken said at one time, he said, you know, I'm going to make blood. I said, really? He goes, but I want to make it very realistic. And he knew that it's red, but it's brown and all the different colors and how he was right, going to do right. it. And he goes, what we need is a blood sample. And I went to my yes. doctor at the time and I, I said, I need two vials of my blood. <laughs> and he said, what? And I said, and I said, well, my friend wants to make a bloodline and I, and I promised him I'd get him some real blood. And the doctor looked at me and he went, oh, you crazy makeup artist, you know? <laughs> so he, he said, okay, and he took two vials of my blood. I brought it back to Ken. We looked at it and it was Ken's formula. I just donated, I was a blood donor, <laughs> you know? And, and then he says, what are we gonna call this? He says, we have to call it something. And I said, how about KD-151? I said, nobody will ever know what that means. You know, and he goes, <laughs> <Until now. laughs> and he said, okay. And, uh, that is and we made the first batch in his kitchen. Wow. And I still have about this much left. Of the first batch? Of the very first batch. Oh, wow. Somewhere That's in my house story. that I never, I u it. That I never used. Don't, it was just don't the, use it. No, no, I don't. And it's the blood right. gel. But Ken, yes. I, I always use Ken's blood. Yeah. Ken, his bloods, his, as he says, his jams, jellies, and uh, <laughs> gels. Um, it's just... It's the standard in the, yeah, in the business, yeah. and his and his spirit gum, yes. which is like the old Max Factor spirit yes, gum. Yes, it is like the matte finish. Yeah, like matte finish, which is terrific. Uh, you know, you can probably. Uh, what is his website? Do you know? We'd like to. You know, I I don't know. It may um, be like kd.com or, yeah. or or Ken Diaz. Yeah, but look up Ken com. Diaz. You yeah. yeah, look him up on the IM. Uh, uh, what is it? IMDb. IMDb. Yeah, yeah, IMDb. And he's done so many things. He's such a nice guy. He really is. Very, very talented. We will we will call him and have him on. But right now, I want to thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, my pleasure. John, this is John Rizzo, ladies and gentlemen, one of Hollywood's most talented, most energetic makeup artists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, you're, you've been watching uh, yours truly and John Rizzo right here on MUA TV's Spotlight on Success. And don't go away because we've got a lot more makeup and hair programming right here in store for you.